Hi, it's Chicken Bone John here. Welcome to the next stage of making a cigar box guitar. And here's one of the sort of crucial stages. We're going to be shaping the back of the neck. If you've been with us so far, you should have something that looks like this. The neck glued up with the back strap, cut to fit the box, headstock shaped, fretboard glued on, and your position markers on and the fretboard trim to width. So, as all of these uh, videos, we're using a minimum of power tools. We've just used an electric drill so far. So we're going to be doing the same thing this time. No routers, no power tools, no power sanders, hand tools. So if you're just at home with, um, in an apartment or you know, building in your kitchen with minimum number of tools, this is to prove that you can do it with the basic hand tools. And I also think it's great to learn how to use some traditional hand tools. Let's get on to this. Okay, so here are the tools that we're going to be using. And the most important thing is going to be the spoke shave. Here we've got a few. These two are the Stanley 151 pattern with a flat sole on it. This one, which I don't use so very often, but I thought I'd show you. And this one's got a rounded, a convex sole, so you can get into curves. The other things we're going to be using, a pair of clamps to hold the work down to the edge of the workbench and some packers, a bit of abrasive paper and some files and rasps. Here's a great tool, uh, it's called a microplane and as you can see it fits into a standard hacksaw blade. This is another one of their products which is a sort of round uh, file, round rasp, another half round rasp, traditional, this is a Valor Bay uh, Bastard, it's a fairly coarse cut file, and the Japanese Shinto rasp, very useful too. You don't have to have all these things, but um, this is how I like to carve a neck, and I would say the spoke shave is a great tool for this. They're inexpensive, easy to set up, and quite easy to use. I'll show you how. Here we go. The very first thing that we do is going to fix our neck down so we can work on it. I've got a little packer here to raise this so that this neck sits parallel on the bench. A couple of packers and a couple of good cast iron clamps. You can use speed clamps, the pistol grip type, but I really always prefer a good cast iron clamp. So here we go. That's our work fixed in there on the bench. That's not going to go anywhere. If you want to stop this piece moving around here, you can simply prop this. Here's just a piece of wood, and I can tap that in underneath there to help stop that moving about. Okay? Handy little hint. I'll take it out of the way for the, uh, for the time being on this. So what we're going to do is we're going to shape here at the neck at uh, the headstock and we're also going to shape here where the heel transitions. Let's start with this. I'm going to start using my half round rasp. You can see we've already got that in a rough shape. So I'm just going to go here Can you see what I'm doing here? I'm just rounding the heel off. And then I'm going to start putting a bit of radius on the neck. I'm going to move round. Don't get too ambitious. Okay, one thing we can do to help us is to mark on the neck 
just some parallel lines to make sure we're doing this symmetrically and I can draw in here roughly where I'd like this to be. Do be careful because what you don't want is to be coming past here where the box is going to be entering the body. So our heel is a good inch, inch and a quarter away from here and we're not going to be taking it back there. So we're keeping well away from there. So I can work that a little bit more down to my line now. We'll go around the other side. That's beginning to look pretty decent. If we look here, you can see the lines I've drawn across to help keep that in a nice symmetrical shape. So that's our heel ready for that uh, next stage. The, ne the next bit we're going to go to is working here. And before we start, I'll just mark on again, similarly like I did with the heel, with just a few parallel marks. Again, we can just round something in because it's going to end up shaping it a little bit like that. That gives us a, a guide to be able to keep that uh, sort of symmetrical. I'm going to use the same tool for this the uh, half round. You can also use this, it gives you a it gives you a tighter it gives you a tighter cut and indeed you could do it with a, a, a coarse file. That would just take you a bit longer. So we're going to rough out with our I'm supporting the neck here. I've not got this in the neck stick for simplicity with, a, with support. So I'm just making sure I'm not overstressing that. And I'm rocking the rasp as I go. Keep stopping and taking a look. I don't want to come right the way over here into the middle and I don't want to come too far down here. So we're not looking too bad. Okay, as you can see we've got these transitions roughed in and what we're going to do is work between the two points. Now. This is my tool of choice, the uh, flat bed spoke shave. You need to make sure the blade is sharp and properly set. We don't want it sticking out too much and we're just going to push. Thumbs on these little dimples here, firmly holding it. You need, it needs to be firm but not a death grip and you can see it will settle into position and we want to try and take nice long even strokes and I must stress oop, working symmetrical now this is interesting because he started digging in here so I'm working against the grain so I'm going to use it with a pulling action because that works better with the grain I've got a little pin knot there, so you just have to be a little bit careful on those. I think I might be taking a little bit too much on each stroke on this, so I'm going to adjust it. It's very easy, just slacken that and then back off these. Now you can set your spoke shave, actually this is interesting. I think I may move to. The, I've got this set. I don't know if you can see this. 
so you've got a deeper cut here and a shallower cut here so I can actually move from taking, if I tighten that down taking a light cut that's too much let's move to my other spoke shave this might be set a little bit lighter yes I think that's better that's better I'm still going across the grain on that side so I'm going to just correct that a bit see these little pin knots gone here and I'm trying to work down symmetrically I'm just going at 45 degree now this is a piece of cherry wood and it really does carve very nicely poplar is even easier cut to carve poplar's light reasonably strong I think it's the only downside it doesn't take as finish as nicely as this but it is for, for the beginner beginner easier to work this is really a push tool but in this instance I'm pulling it um, I could be doing it from the other direction but it just keeps me out of the camera I think a bit there pay attention to these transitions so we're coming down to where we've brought it down to a radius with our rasp oops this is going to get a little bit tricky to work that one because it won't let me it's not liking me pushing the blade right the way into there that's not a big problem once we've got a a decent chamfer on this we're going to start rounding over and I'm just going to take little passes rounding over I'm going to move to the other shoulder I can feel the, the, the grains are changing its nature and I'm going to continue going round the shoulder going around this other shoulder so I'm getting closer to the fretboard you want to be careful you don't want to go too close to that see I'm not taking much of a shaving off this we'll just keep working look at, you know, if we look at this I'm working in real time there's no huge cuts in the footage I'm not speeding it up so we're getting our shape very close to what we want now I don't use any gauges or templates I merely feel it with my hand because that's where it's going to end up in your hand so you're looking for a nice comfortable feel in the hand I'll talk about one very important fact of viewpoint we're shaping this neck before we put any frets on it now if we take a piece of timber like this which is where we started we could put the frets in here making sure that's nice and flat we could put the frets in and then we could carve the back but wood's a natural material and when it grows the tree grows to resist stresses so there'll be some stresses compression and tension built into this timber and as you take the back off you're cutting away timber and you may find some of it might be in compression or tension and as you remove it it may cause this neck to move one way or the other now if you've already fretted it got it nice and flat and then you take this back off and it starts moving whether it's twisting or bowing one way or the other it will then put your frets out of a nice straight line it will still work and the chances of this happening 
are relatively small but I think it's better to shape this then we can check our fret fretboard for being nice and true. It saves a lot of hassle later on. It does mean putting the frets in is slightly more difficult because it's easier working with a square section to rest it on something. Anyway, so we're just going to, let's say you can just, if we want to take it slightly finer, we can back it off, tighten that up, let's get it finer still. Now we're not taking anything there, so still not taking anything. There we go. So we can continue tiny, as I said, the grain's changing as we come across here, and I can feel that pinhole not so I just have to be a bit careful there and I'm working down nearly to the fretboard keeping an eye on it and if you can see I've still got this strip of bare wood on the top okay this is a little bit tricky needs a bit of extra work you can, this can help you a little bit because we can use this rounded base to just get into here and you see I'm twisting this this is a, a tool that I will not use along the full length of the neck it's just for getting into here so this is pretty specialist it's by no means essential. I don't often use this, but I thought I would show you how this can be used. I'm a little bit close to my bench here, so I'm just going to move everything out a wee bit. So we can get in here with this. I'm not going to use it along the length it really is only to work this transition so it's not the easiest tool to use but saves you a little bit of time we can probably do a little bit more cleaning up now but be very careful with this because it takes off a lot of material You may want to use one of these to do your shaping. The Shinto Rasp. It's a great tool. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm using it along the whole length. It's got two sides. It's got a coarse and a smooth or fine. So I'm using it along the whole length. Keeping it moving over. One of the things about this though, it does leave a rougher finish than the spoke shade, but it's very controllable, I'm hardly putting on any pressure. So with this, you need to go easy with it. We've got a little bit more shaping here to do to get rid of some of these cuts and notches. Really, it's, it's the right shape, but we've got a lot of notches in it. So I'm going to go in here with my half round file. Gently, do, and I'm moving. moving this all the time going around the other side I'm 
and making sure I've got a nice smooth job. Now I can see here that this glue, I've, I've still got a glue line here and I can feel it. So I want to work that a little bit. This is really a job for the file. The rasp is too coarse, sandpaper is a little bit, uh, it, you can't quite control it as well as a file and it won't cut, it won't cut as well. You'll be a long time doing this. And it's quite easy to be lopsided with sandpaper. You know, it's difficult to get a block in there to get the right shape. So, can you see um, what I'm doing? I'm turning the file constantly to try and keep it moving in the right direction so I'm constantly smoothing out. out. Half round file, you can do a lot with that. Let's okay, go. let's look at the transition into the headstock. Again I've got these parallel lines so I can see what I'm doing and it's going to be the same sort of thing. Got a little bit of vibration there, if we'd have put that neck stick support in that would help that vibration. But because I'm working on a taller bench than I normally do, um, that was just a, a scrap of timber I, I wedged underneath. My proper neck support has got a little strap and a foot which grabs the floor. It's all just made out of scrap, you, you know, nothing fancy. But as I say, you can see I'm constantly moving the file. So I'm not working in one spot for too long. I'm looking for a nice symmetrical line and I can begin to work I'm just beginning to work that now I've got that little pin knot that was in there and with my file working along here I can, I can feel that it's going out You can see that's our neck half virtually completed. Okay, and then I'm feeling with my hands to see if there's any lumps and bumps. I think what I can do now is start sanding this and I've got here just a piece of 120 grit that I've just put a piece of gaffer tape on the back so I've got a band so that I can shoe shine it as we can say that will it, it's a way of evening out any bump so can you see I'm working down on the shoulder now here then I'm going to work this other shoulder I need to get into here and I'll probably just take again my 120 grit I've just folded it so I've got a bit of a shape and I'm using my finger just to get into the curve okay so I'm feeling I, I want to get rid of any sort of grain and I can again go down in in this direction, this is what I really want to be sanding in the direction of the grain. The shoe shining is great for evening out any humps and bumps along the length, but you really want this in this direction. Again, I'm doing the same thing, it's folded, and I'm going to get into this curve, just, just using my fingers, no block or anything. You see, it's not that laborious. I think people think that this is such a time consuming and physically hard job. Well, it's, you know, that they feel they need to put a router on here or use power tools. It's really unnecessary. As you can see, all real time, no power tools. 
you know, and you could reduce this down to the absolute basic tools. You could do this with your one spoke shave, probably because you were ten a second hand, a half round Valor Bay file, a bit of sandpaper. Yeah, this this is a great thing if you've got a hacksaw. If you have got a hacksaw, I think these might be about, I think between about fifteen and twenty pounds. These blades. But there you go. On here, I just want to be fit. I've still got a tiny bit of a shoulder. So, what I might do is just take a block. I've just got a scrap of wood, and see that's an off cut from my neck. And I'm going to work along here. I'm flat with the fretboard, and I'm just rounding that over. So, I've not got any trace of a ridge. You know, then we can come round doing the rest of this, just knocking the corners off. It's always good to use a block. It gives you a lot more control over how much of that corner you want to knock off. And then I'm going to do the other side. Same sort of thing. Now we've gone down this, I'm using the block again this way, getting rid of the imperfections. What I would do then is I'd work down from my 120 to 240 grit, you know, and then I can get rid of any pencil marks. Again, we've got a flat area, use a block, don't use your fingers, otherwise, you tend to knock the thing all out of square and it goes a bit lumpy looking. There we go, our pencil lines are beginning to go. And then I think, oh, I can just take that, just soften that. Just soften that up a wee bit. I've still got a mark here at the heel. So, I'll just take that out. This is why you should really only use an HB pencil, marked lightly. Never use a pen. Don't use anything harder because if you use a you know an H or a two H pencil, you'll actually scribe into the wood. And I'm just going to knock that radius off back into where it's going to go into the box. You can take it out. And here we have our neck. I can feel that's nicely shaped, nice transition into the headstock. The only thing we need to do is round off here, round off on the top, and the tail stock just to finish that off nicely. But there is the neck all shaped. Okay, so now you know how to carve the back of your neck so you've got a nice, comfortable, smooth profile. The next stage is going to be leveling this fretboard and putting some frets in. It might seem daunting but don't worry. Again, simple tools, take it easy and we'll get there. See you next time.